Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Wheatman from Venani Private Clients. Um, it's nice to have you here for lunchtime. Um, I'm going to take you through a little bit on just how to select a portfolio of shares. Um, what I've decided to do is to make this reasonably practical. And I've used our methodology that we use to select shares for our unit trust and for our personal share portfolios. And, um, and that is our portfolio manager, McKelly St. Angelo. Uh, he does this on a daily basis. So I thought I'd, I'd use this as a practical case study and you'll learn from that and you'll be able to then learn how to select shares. Uh, once again, remember, you can ask me questions, but I'm going to answer them all at the end. So let's let's get into it. So first of all, just a little bit about our philosophy um, and how we think as an asset manager. And that, and that should hopefully guide you on how you should pick shares. So the one good thing about being a retail investor rather than an institutional investor is you can be quite agile. You can actually very quickly get in and out of shares and you can reconstruct your portfolio very quickly. You're not like a unit trust that's very sticky and tends to be in, in stocks for several years. So what I'm going to show you here is really a couple of ways to pick stocks uh, that you can be fairly agile and you can change your portfolio up uh, quite quickly. Just in terms of how we think, we are we are stockbrokers. In, and so we always tend to be bottom-up investors. That means that we pick stocks. We don't pick tick general, predict general trends, or we use them, but we tend to look at individual stocks and we build our portfolio from the bottom up. So our investment philosophy is very simple, and this is one we would encourage you to adopt, is that we invest in shares that we believe can show consistent business. So they've got to be a business that consistently grows, consistently performs, and that also then comes through in consistent share price performance. And you'll see that coming through a lot in my presentation today. So let's dive into it. I just want to use this slide just to show you a little bit of what sort of portfolios we manage. And, and this is the sort of stuff that you can build yourselves. So the, the ones I'm going to be concentrating on mostly today is the, the ones on the left-hand side of the slide, which is the accelerated growth, income and growth, and emerging companies. These are share portfolios. Accelerated growth tends to look for growth type stocks. Income and growth, you tend to look for dividends, and emerging companies, you tend to look for small cap stocks. So, of course, what in the accelerated growth, you, you tend to have the sexy stocks that have price movements, um, don't, good earnings, but maybe low dividends, and they, uh, you're looking for capital growth. Income and growth, you're typically looking for dividend type stocks uh, that are going to give you a decent yield, and emerging companies, of course, are the smaller type caps, uh, smaller stocks, mid caps, small cap, and altex. Let me take you through then how we think as asset managers. So this is our investment process. And I'm not saying you need to copy this, but you need to come up with a, with a process like this yourself for picking shares. So the first thing that we do is, and, and we mix a lot of things here. We mix fundamentals, we mix technicals, and we mix a bit of qualitative as well. Um, so the first step we always do is we look at total return. We have a model for looking at, for selecting consistent performing shares. We then have a multi-factor uh, ranking model, and multi-factor is just a very clever term for saying we look at a couple of things. So there's a couple of ratios we look at in terms of the balance sheet and the income statement uh, before we invest in a share. Then tactical, that's just a clever way of saying what's going on out there. So we look at these exogenous or external vari variables, uh, and that's the economy, currency, etc. And I'll drill into that a little bit just now. And then last of all, it's the soft issues, the qualitative. How good is this company? How What are management like, etc.? I'll touch on that right at the end. So let's dive into it. So in terms of total return, what do you really want from your shares? Well, you want consistent growth. You want to get dividends plus capital growth. We look for stocks that are going to give us 20% annualized year after year after year. So we put this through our models, and we want a stock that's going to give us dividends and capital growth of over 20% for three years and five years. If a stock doesn't do it in uh, three years but has done it in five years, might still make it into our list. And what we do is we rank those and we look at the top uh, portion of shares that give us that, that, that total return. So not very complex that. So really all you're doing is you're taking the annualized growth in the share price plus the dividends and you want to have a consistency of over 20%. So if a, if a share makes it through that first pass, then we'll do more analysis on it. The further analysis is what we call this multi-factor ranking model, which is just means we're looking at a lot of variables or a lot of factors 
and we're, we're measuring our, our stocks in terms of, and a lot of these things are income statement generated, so we're looking at cash flows, we're looking at net income. What you want to see is consistency and headline earnings per share. You want to see that the, the company is producing positive headline earnings per share and positive growth in headline earnings per share year after year. And what you don't want is a company that promises you earnings per share and suddenly comes out with a trading statement and they miss on their headline earnings per share. Other things that we look at is uh, return on assets, return on capital, and return on uh, equity. Uh, a lot of these things you can go onto a lot of websites and, and get these sort of ratios. So if you go onto, for example, ShareNet or uh, MoneyWeb and you type in the share code, a lot of the time the financial data will be there available for you. Um, the other thing that we kind of want to see is that the company has got profitable margins. We don't want to see margin shrinkage. So this would be important for a retailer, for example, that what you don't want to see is that they're discounting their goods and that their margins that they're making on their products are less and less. So a lot of fundamental data here. And uh, this fundamental data, you can do it yourself or you can cheat a bit and you can get your stockbroker to do it for you because uh, they are analyzing these uh, all of these ratios using things like Bloomberg's and Reuters. So what we want to do is we want to find a lot of stocks or stocks that tick a lot of those boxes and then we move on to the next one. We need to really then also look from a tactical point of view because if um, this is what's happening in the economy, the financial environment, the external factors that are not inside that business that will certainly impact on whether that's a good share in the future. Because everything we've done to date is looking backwards, but you also need to look forwards. So you need to say, if my company that I'm going thinking of buying and putting into my portfolio is very dependent on what currencies, what the foreign exchange rate is doing, for example, the dollar, dollar rand, and it's very sensitive to that, then you better have a view on where the rand's going. If you're getting involved in a banking stock or a company that's got a high level of gearing, that means they've got borrowings, you want to have a look at interest rates because that will definitely have an effect on how your share does. Government policy and regulation. If government or the regulators are going to change the rules of the game and that's going to negatively affect your share that you think you're buying, maybe you should leave it out of your portfolio. Commodity prices is very, very important for a lot of stocks in our market. You know, a, a huge number of our stocks are dependent on the underlying commodity price. So you really, really need to understand how the commodity, uh, the gold price, platinum, palladium, silver, copper, these sort of inputs uh, will affect your resource, resources share, your gold stock. The other thing is there's, there is indirect influence by commodity prices as well. So, for example, if you are getting involved in a share that produces chickens, um, well, nobody produces chickens, but grow, but uh, has chickens, culls them, turns them into products. Clearly, you need to know what the maize price is going to do because maize is by far the biggest input into a chicken. Um, so the other thing is investor sentiment. Now, we probably some of you will have seen in the last couple of days that everybody's getting a little bit worried. The market is off sort of eight to ten percent in the last week or two. And it doesn't really matter how good your share is, investor sentiment and what the general market is going to do is going to make your share go down as well. You know, there's an old saying in trading that a high tide uh, lifts all boats. Depending on what the market is doing, your share will move with it. So possibly if the market is falling, you were going to pick that stock and you were going to invest, maybe wait. Wait for the market itself to turn and then get involved. And then also overseas, what's happening, geopolitical risk. What's happening in if, if you have a financial meltdown in the U.S., clearly that's going to have a knock-on effect. So although we are bottom-up stock pickers and we pick individual stocks, we do take into account all of these economic and sectoral um, overriding conditions. And then the last step in picking a share is probably the hardest. It's the qualitative. Now, if you've got a lot of time on your hands and you can go and visit every listed share in the market, you will get a very, very good feel for management and what they do. And you can do a site visit and go and look at their operations and make sure that they're a quality company. The problem is you won't have time for that. And you probably have I've got a real job and you're working. And so you have to do this kicking of the tires, as I call it, vicariously. You need to do it through someone else. 
And that's where analysts play a role. Because financial analysts, and there's a lot of rated analysts, and, I've, and this slide has got Anthony Clark, who is our small cap analyst. Um, they go out and they visit these companies. And then they publish information. And what I like about Anthony, and you can go onto his Twitter feed, uh, he is small talk daily. He covers small and mid cap shares. And what Anthony does is he goes and visits a lot of small cap managers. And what I've done is I've copy pasted his current tweets in there. And you'll see, he, he says, hosting management of Tor. Now, Tor is a small cap company that we have in our small cap portfolio for lunch tomorrow. Um, will we get some good news from my lunch? You, he's clearly, he's talking to management. He's finding out about their business, and he's finding out whether it's a good stock for you to be in. And you'll see, as soon as he finishes that lunch, he tweets about it. Now, that, that's really interesting because that's information that's in the public domain and available to every retail client. So what you've got to do is you've got to find guys like Anthony Clark, and you've got to follow them because they are really going in there and kicking the tires for you. So after going through these four steps, um, what do you end up with? And here you go. These are our four portfolios uh, that we have at the moment that we run for clients. Uh, these are bespoke portfolios. We do run unit trust and hedge funds as well. But you end up basically picking stocks like this. So in an accelerated growth fund where you're looking for growth, you can see we've got the likes of Aspen, MediClinic, and some of these names will come up in different portfolios, but Aspen, MediClinic, MTM, Omnia, and Steinhoff. Those are five of our holdings currently in our growth portfolio. And those stocks will have made it through uh, our, our valuation process. Our income and growth tends to have slightly more dividend type stocks, but you can still see that there is a growth aspect in there. You've still got the Netcares, Aspen, MTN, Bidvest, and SA Breweries. You know, good quality counters, but possibly with slightly more dividends. Emerging companies, now we're looking at the small cap, small and mid cap. So there you see the smaller type stocks, the TORs, uh, Afrimats, those make it through into those sort of portfolios. And then Shariah is an interesting one because Shariah compliant portfolios um, have to comply with Shariah uh, rules. And the JSC has a Shariah index. And so Sharia, in terms of Sharia, you'll start to see you don't get the stocks that have got, that make their money from alcohol, cigarettes. They also don't have huge leverage on their balance sheet. So that reduces your, your universe of stocks. But you can see if you kind of go through that four-step process that I'm suggesting, and, and by all means, go back and read this presentation. If you've got any, any questions about each of those steps, feel free to email me at marketvanoniprivateclients.co.za, and I can engage with you and take you through that process. But if you go through that process, you should end up with stocks like this in your portfolio, and you should beat the index. And at the end of the day, that's what you want to do. You want to make profits and you want to be better than the market. Because if you're not better than the market, you might as well just go and buy the index. You might as well go and just buy an ETF. So hopefully in a few minutes there, and I've gone through it very, very quickly, I understand, but hopefully in a few minutes I've kind of taken you through how we think as asset managers, um, how we pick our stocks, and literally that process determines how we put shares in our portfolio.